Himal magazine uh, seeks to do cross-border journalism in South Asia. South Asia is a region that has nearly a fourth of the world's population and uh, the, the, the borders that have been created since 1947 keeps people apart and they also keep economies apart. It doesn't allow socio-economic development to spurt the way it should. So some of us came together from Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, Nepal, came up with this idea that we must try and promote an idea of South Asia that goes beyond the nation states coming together. Something much more symbiotic and um, something more syncretistic that brings the history of the subcontinent to define, to use the history to define our future. And the best way to do it was to have a, a magazine uh, with this vision. But the magazine has to be, has to have a publisher. So we decided it has to be a, a trust because we're too far ahead, too much of a pioneering effort for it to be acceptable for an entrepreneur or a business entity, which will happen in the future as we set the stage. So we decided it should be the South Asia Trust. Uh, given the laws of, of South Asia, it had to be based in one country. So we have a South Asia Trust based in Kathmandu with board members that are fully part of this idea and with Himal as the flagship and with advisors, our friends from all over. This then led on to several other ideas. Um, while Himal remains a flagship <coughs> uh, publication, a portal, a quarterly book, a uh, bookazine. Uh, but then we also felt there was a need to promote research in areas of South Asia, something that is not really happening within individual countries. So we felt it was important to have an entity, a research entity that also promotes exchange. That's how the RE Institute for South Asian Research and Exchange came up. And RE, H-R-I, is actually not an acronym. It is a sound. Uh, it is not even a word with a meaning. It is a sound that comes from Buddhistic and Hindu uh, liturgy, if you will, that is meant to evoke empathy. And if there's anything that South Asia needs or journalism in South Asia needs between these nation states that are, you know, uh, sunk in ultra-nationalism, what you need is empathy for the other. This is why we felt this was the proper name. And the one other entity we have within the South Asia Trust is a documentary film festival called Film South Asia Festival of Documentaries. That is because besides a magazine which will promote intellectual discourse, thinking, reportage. Uh, the audiovisual medium is the most effective in generating empathy and ideas across societies. That is why we have a, a documentary film festival, we have a, and we have a, now a research institute and a flagship magazine. I think. Uh, to be noticed by the Prince Klaus Fund for being active in South Asian journalism and cultural activism at a South Asian scale. It really required uh, an imaginative organization like the Prince Klaus Fund to recognize this type of work. And so it certainly energized me personally because it was validation of an idea that within South Asia is not yet the rage. It required an organization across the seven seas that, uh, uh, that too based on a mercantilist uh, country with a hi mercantilist history, to, which knows in that sense the globe. Holland is a small country, but it has its reach globally. So I think there may be something to do with the fact that the Prince Klaus Fund is based in Holland but it has got global reach in the aspect of culture. Perhaps people recognized what we do, what we're seeking to do here in South Asia um, better than us, we ourselves. So for me personally, there was a great um, uh, validation of this idea. Uh, also because 
while working in South Asia, I'm also from Nepal. And within Nepal, I have been personally engaged in civil rights and civil liberties. And always coming up against the state or the establishment or individual political parties. So uh, a kind of an isolating moment that people face in different societies at different times. So for that reason too, I felt recognized and uh, that there were people concerned with the kind of things that push me along. Um, the organization itself, I think uh, Himal uh, benefited enormously from the fact that uh, many people in other societies seem to like what we do. Film South Asia benefited because <clears throat> around that time I had lost the ability to raise funds for the documentary festival. Because of my own Nepal-based activism, I was becoming a little unpopular uh, because of the status quo within the country and we needed the money. So I can say, tell you simply that uh, uh, the festival of that year, I think it was 2009, was completely funded by the award I got. Uh, from the Prince Claus Fund. So there was a direct cash transfer, if you will, from Holland to me to the film festival, <coughs> Film South Asia. As far as the reinstitute is concerned, um, there was a, uh, I would not be wrong in saying that the reinstitute for South Asian research and exchange is the child of those of us in the South Asia Trust and Himal and the Prince Claus Fund because uh, Lakshmi, my colleague and myself, we uh, sought the support after I was given the Prince Klaus Award for that year. Then we were given certain privileges of making applications, which of course had to go through the rigorous process of selection. But it is from the Prince Klaus Fund Award that RE has got to do the kind of things it has done with a lot of energy and we are moving into the future with the three year support provided by the Prince, Prince Klaus Fund. So you can see uh, within the South Asia Trust, the work of Himal Magazine, the work of uh, Film South Asia and the startup of RE, all of them have had uh, input from the Prince Klaus Fund. It's very concrete in my mind, the kind of support we get from the global partnership of Prince Klaus Fund. Um, one, because it is continuous, it is not a one-off meeting. The one thing, someone like me, <clears throat> it may not be a South Asian trait, but certainly it's a personal trait. If you're going to meet somebody once and then be gone, um, it does not provide that human contact to be able to think ideas and collaborate or seek uh, validation, again, th that word, in what you're doing. So what Prince Klaus a network of partners does is you meet in different corners of the world everybody is self-confident uh, if not arrogant in their area of work completely mm, knowing what they're doing why they're doing it and to be able to touch base and throw ideas and communicate with that group I, I don't know if there are many organizations such as this where invested people from across the globe come, across, come together. And in this instance, in Kathmandu, we're able to, A, show a South Asian capital, a city with a rather strong and energetic cultural base, uh, came late into modernization. So, so much of our traditions and uh, cultural formations are still linked to the deep past, unlike even many cities of South Asia, which have modernized long before Kathmandu did. So one is an opportunity, not only me as somebody from Nepal, but me as somebody from South Asia, to be able to share the incredible smorgasbord of cultural activity here. The other is to share our ideas of South Asia from this city which is some people consider to be almost like a capital of South Asia for its um, uh, civilizational or cultural attributes. Then beyond that I think is for others to ask questions and to take away. We can take from others who come by but our friends the network partners who come here I am convinced they will take away 
quite a lot from what uh, this valley, Kathmandu Valley, has to offer. I see Himal uh, more or less sustainable uh, on its own by having picked up issues. Uh, right now we are still uh, a voice that is relatively small, a significant voice but not loud enough, not politically significant enough, uh, not creating enough controversies, not for the sake of creating controversies but when you raise issues uh, of the kind that makes various power centers vulnerable. That is when you've achieved what you meant to do. We have spent time because the South Asia project is so much against the deeper agendas of the nation states. It is actually one where you're going against not one est state establishment, but eight state establishments. So we've been very careful in building our platform uh, so that it is strong. But in eight, ten years from now, over the next eight, ten years, I would expect that we will be able to come forward uh, much more effectively and be heard for what we have to say. Right now, I'll have to admit that we are still putting out suggestions uh, and people can reject it as, as of now. But there's no other way to go but to accept the kind of South Asian regionalism, South Asian cross-border uh, activism and exchange of information, ideas, people, all of these is the way of the future. Uh, but we are at a point where nation statism is still very harsh and ascendant. And we got to whittle away at the base of that. I think it will happen. And I would only like to add this point that what we are trying to do in Himal South Asian, uh, the Reinstitute for uh, South Asian Research and Exchange and Film South Asia is to use the energy we have from the cultural history of South Asia which was a more or less unitary cultural history taking energy from that to tackle the geopolitics of the moment so we can take South Asia back to once again the nation states will remain but because of the cultural strength that we have from our past there will be much more coming together between the peoples of South Asia.